一份评小问，阿尼。美国教育近年来一直受到当地民众的诟病，认为美国的教育系统，特别是中小学教育，一直 declining and failing。除了一直以来存在的教育投入不够、教师工资过低、老师教学方法过时、考试越来越应试化、学生家庭贫困比例高、家长对孩子教育参与度低之外呢，最近几年又出现了各种其他的问题，比如日益严重的校园霸凌、枪击案频发等一系列学校安全问题，还有就是意识形态斗争，例如部分州给中小学设立禁书名单，篡改美国殖民和奴役黑人的。历史制定了 Don't Say Gay， 那就是不允许三年级以下小孩了解同性恋及跨性别的政策规定。安全、稳定、不出事儿，越来越成为学校管理层看重的事情。那么也因此呢，为了更好的管理学生，很多学校出现了一些比较奇葩的规定，侵犯了学生的隐私和自由。那么今天我们就来看一看美国的学生和老师们分享的一些奇葩校规。最后呢，我也会聊一聊我们国家的教育情况。这一张截图呢，来自于一个学生拍摄的视频。午饭时间，一个警察坐在那种游泳池救生员坐的那种高椅上 ，keeping a watchful eye， 以防学生发生斗殴打架事件。一旦发生学生有起冲突的苗头呢，就会立马大喊或者冲下来 break up fights。这个阵势啊，就像是一个监狱。这么做的起因呢，是现在美国的学生起冲突很容易走极端，发生流血事件。有的网友认为啊，这都是美国父母不够格，经济下滑，离婚率过高，父母们呢为了生存忙于工作。没有人管孩子，导致了整个国家的的 moral decay。也有人认为呢，这是枪支泛滥造成的。当政者啊，为了选票，宁愿牺牲校园安全，也不严控枪支。而学校呢，也只不过是 desperate times call for desperate measures。至少学校有在想办法解决问题嘛。这一所小学黑板上呢贴了一首童谣，上面写着“锁好门，关吊灯，不要说话，躲到桌子后面，等到安全为止”。试图通过让孩子记住这个童谣来预防枪击案发生带来的伤害。近年来呢，美国 mass shooting 频发，整个社会对此都是风声鹤唳，草木皆兵啊。光今年截止到三月二十日，就发生了一百二十五起 mass shooting， 造成共一百七十五人死亡，四百三十七人受伤。这其中呢，有十四起发生在校园。校园枪击案发生的背后是一个非常。严重的社会问题，家长们认为编一首这种顺口溜的行为呢，非常的偷懒。这种 creepy nursery rhyme， 成年人看了都会觉得毛骨悚然，更不要说小孩子了。那一名小学老师就说啊，孩子们在反复的枪击案演习中都感到非常的恐惧，很多孩子都因此有了 PTSD。一名网友还直接评论到，这个国家就是 a dystopia。二零二一年九月，爱达荷州的四所学校规定禁止学生带书包上学。起因呢是在一名十三岁学生的书包里发现了枪支，因此啊，学生们不得不用手推车、购物车，甚至是爆米花机来装学习用品和书籍上学。学生们说，这是一个多么笑中带泪的情形！想到禁书包，怎么不去禁枪呢 ？Ban anything but the problem. 佛罗里达州去年颁布了一项法律，严格限制学校让学生通过阅读来了解社会历史等真实信息，要求所有书籍必须经过专家认证程序，上了批准清单才能给公立学校的学生看。但是现存在学校里的书实在是太多了，一本一本的拿去审核太慢，又怕不小心触犯了禁令，于是就出现了这样荒唐的画面：学校干脆把书架直接清空，这样呢就不用担心被家长举报、被教育局查处了。但学生也暂时没有书读了，有个老。老师啊，因为书架上书籍太多，来不及一一检查是否违规呢，也来不及一走，于是干脆直接在书架上盖上了白纸。学校这么措手不及一刀切呢，是因为这项法律规定，该地区任何人，包括保安汤姆拉、理发店小妹 Lucy 啦，只要对某本书籍不满，就可以提出异议进行投诉。一个叫做“自由母亲”的组织已经对一百五十多本学校图书馆里的书进行了投诉，包括许多涉及种族和 LGBTQ 问题的书籍，比如《The Color Purple》这本获奖小说。讲的呢是一个黑人小女孩克服压迫和虐待、成长和自我实现的故事。同时啊，这本书还提到了性别平等的问题。有家长说自己真的不知道该怎么跟孩子解释 “This is real life”， 因为这不是另一个世界才会发生的事情吗？是佛罗里达哈，佛罗里达高中体育协会提出让女学生运动员呢提交他们的月经周期报告，在此之前还会让医生对学生进行身体检查，并将检查报告提交给协会，检查合格后学生才能继续参与运动。但是该协会并没有表明这么做的目的是什么，以及他们为什么会需要女学生的体检报告。美国去年提出了反堕胎法案，所以家长纷纷质疑，政府这么做是在试图把学校变成自己的监控系统，以来监控女学生是否堕胎
As they lose control over those they can't, they will seek to increase it over those they can't. 有一个学生发帖说，学校趁暑假的时候呢，在厕所安装了铁门，防止学生下课的时候上厕所。学生呢，就只有在上课的时候再去和老师申请上厕所了。猜测啊，这么做的目的应该是怕下课厕所学生多，厕所又没有监控，万一有人在厕所掏枪或者学生聚集发生枪击案的话，那怎么办？但是问题是啊，那谁来开门呢？如果雇人的话，那么就要浪费人力物力；如果是自动门的话，万一学生没控制好 n n 的时间，被锁在厕所。所以怎么办？有网友就讽刺，这连监狱都不如，这是在提前训练孩子们以后如何适应压榨老公的流水线工作吗？对于这些信息呢，美国民众对此都表现出了非常消极的态度，纷纷评论道：“美国让我很烦躁，我讨厌待在这里，群里一个接一个被剥夺，历史真的会重演，难怪全世界都觉得我们疯了。”看到这些真难过。我爱美国，美国很美，很多样化，但是天啊 ，things are really jumping backwards。作为一个老师，看到这些消息，不管它发生在哪里，真的是觉得非常的悲哀。但我希望呢，不要有人踩一捧一，不要有弱者比烂窃喜的心态，不要在比烂中找自信。We're all equal in our flaws。事实上呢，都很烂。我们的教育有很多问题，我们也有装修成监狱风格的某中学。最近呢，我还看到另一个中学发布的一个全方位杜绝早恋的规定，最后一句最搞笑：目前主要严打异性恋关系，日后会严打同性关系。以这些规则制定者的尿性啊，以后连和同学说句话都要记过了吧 ？Every time I think about this topic, I feel hopeless. I may be teaching, but I'm not really educating. Instead, I'm engaging in Killing, killing students' imagination and creativity, killing their thirst for knowledge, killing their rich emotions, killing their joy, killing their independent thinking, killing their physical and mental health, killing their individuality. Even in teaching, it's not really about imparting knowledge, but rather just training them to pass exams. I didn't cause all of this, but I'm an accomplice to the system that has kidnapped me. I truly hate it all. But I'm powerless. In reality, teachers themselves are just a group of perfectly tamed slaves who follow orders and conduct day-to-day -day obedience training on children who are locked in a cage. And you call these puppets engineers of a of the human soul? Maybe it was okay in the past, but now we are nothing more than dementors controlled by Voldemort. 当然也有可以不这样的学校和老师，比如近日让大家破大防的北京四中晚会。This elegant novel-esque student life has prickled the hearts of many. 但实际上啊，北京四中或者四中的学生什么都没有做错啊，他们过的才是正常的生活啊。我这里说的正常啊，不是说人人都穿晚礼服、拉大提琴，是指这种。除了学习之外，还有生活。除了机器，你还是个人的状态。大多数人并不奢求晚礼服和大提琴，但是为什么戴彩色的发卡、听流行音乐、看娱乐电影，甚至吃喜欢的零食都不可以呢？这些难道要怪到北京四中学生的头上吗？诗诗大会上慷慨激昂的女生之前被网暴 ，The netizens' dislike was not directed at her, but rather at their own past selves who had been brainwashed, trained, and fooled. 有一个残酷的现实是，北京的高考难度和竞争激烈程度其实并不像网传的那么弱，相反呢，比很多学不死就要往死里学的地方还要激烈。我们看到北京四中的学生那么光鲜亮丽的，并不是他们不拼命学习，有很多时间玩，他们学的并不比任何人少，而是他们从小学开始就学的比其他人更高效，也就是学的比你好，所以玩的也比你好。这个女生所在的学校呢，刚参加了湖南的九校联考，成绩呢可以说是非常的。普通，在这种拉屎的时间都要挤出来学习的衡水模式下，没有一科成绩平均分及格，数学呢更是惨不忍睹，满分一百五十分，平均分只有四十一分，这说明学习效率极其低下。这当然和教育资源不均衡有着极大的关系啊！北京学生享受的教育资源，对于其他地区而言就是降维打击。In underdeveloped areas of education, especially in third and fourth higher cities and small towns, the leadership is Poor and the teaching level of teachers is also low. They do not have the ability to lead students to study efficiently like Beijing's teachers. So they can only repeatedly make students do thousands of papers, even if they have to practice twenty times, even ten times, are not enough. 
Beijing students are already using guns and are researching the atomic bomb, while students in other regions are still practicing the red tassel spear for more than 10 hours a day under the guidance of their teachers, which is the so-called a full leader leads a nest of fools. Of course, it's not the teacher's fault. As I mentioned earlier, teachers are just puppets. I don't mean to look down on these teachers either, as I come from Yunnan, which is an area with very low education level. So I know. 知乎上充斥着中小学老师对教育现状的不满和牢骚，但最终呢，都归结于上面要求的都是被上面压的，我也没有办法，只能向下压学生。作为知识分子群体呢，竟然没有一个人敢于将压力推向真正做错事的人。As for me, whether you believe it or not, I'm already an outlier in this group, labeled as doing things my own way, acting boldly, and unwilling to devote myself. And my school, we don't have the same intensity as Hanshui mode, but some people just can't resist trying to replicate it and pushing everyone towards that path. There was a teacher who proposed having evening self-study sessions on Saturdays, even though we are a day school. Eh, 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 提醒你别比烂，别底层互殴。However, the senior class that year had the worst performance in our school's recent history. It was so bad that we couldn't even find out our school's exam results. Recently, I did find out, and it was unbelievable. I knew we didn't do well, but I didn't expect to perform that poorly. And what was the result of all this? We had even more classes and evening self-study sessions. Before I had to constantly stay with students for evening self-study, which was quite exhausting and unnecessary. Even though I don't have a set schedule, I used to work at home almost every day until after 9 p.m. I would study many courses, including English and、uh, teaching-related ones, and research more advanced and interesting teaching methods. It was not so much about dedicating myself entirely, but I, at least I genuinely loved it. And now, it would be better to encourage teachers to learn how to make atomic bombs rather than forcing them to monitor students practicing red tassel spear. Lastly, I'd like to say that students being so tired and stressed out is closely related to the economic environment of society. However, I'm not really qualified to discuss this point. 好了，今天的视频呢就到这里了。大家都要努力学习、奋斗，这样才能有光明的未来哟、哦。拜拜。